Hey, welcome to Financial Revelations. I am David Safransky. Uh, today's episode is going to be uh, about some questions that we've received. When I was in one of my first economics classes in college, I hadn't done the reading. It was a huge class. There's, I don't know, maybe 300 people in it. And they're talking about widgets, 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 widget this, widget that. And I finally raised my hand and I said, you know, uh, I'm a little confused. What's a widget? Everybody laughed <laughs> because it was obviously uh, obvious I hadn't done the reading. Uh, I don't want that to happen to you. I want you to know what a widget is. And so we're going to talk about globalization today because a lot of people have been asking me about it and supply chains. Really, they've been asking about supply chains. Uh, but I want you to know that you could always email a question to me at joshua at epsf.com. That'll be above my head. And on Thursday mornings in Cleveland, I'm on WCRF 103.3. It's a Moody radio station. And the good thing about Moody radio is they have an app and you can listen to the show in another country, on another continent, probably even on the uh, space station. We should test that theory. But you can download the Moody app and listen to the show. It's uh, Thursday mornings, 8 to 9 a.m. We take phone calls. You could text questions in. So even if you're not in the listening area, you can enjoy the show and ask some questions directly to me. If you're not going to be able to do that, but you want a question answered, then send an email to Josh, joshua at epsf.com, and we'll answer your question. So People want to know, we've been talking about supply chains a lot. What is a supply chain? What does that mean? Uh, and the supply chain, I want you to think of it like this. I'm going to give you an example so you don't have to remember this. There won't be a test. The supply chain is really the system uh, of organizations, activities involved in the making or supplying a product or a service to a consumer. And I'm going to give you a great example because I just bought a brand new pickup truck on last Saturday. Could not find a pickup truck anywhere. Most dealers have one, maybe two pickup trucks available. And in a pickup truck, I bought an F-150. There's steel, aluminum, glass, wire, fabric or leather for the heated ventilated seats, which my truck has, which is really nice. Um, especially the ventilated seats. I really like that option microchips, computers, lights, all the things that go into making that truck. And if there is one part that goes into that truck that's integral, that you have to have, or that truck is not going to drive, if there's one part that you can't get, or the supplier, it's unavailable, or it's slower than normal, the supply chain gets disrupted. So when you think of building a truck, uh, they're stamping the engine at a, at a plant. They're doing dip the frames at another plant. And they're bringing them all together. And that's just what Ford is doing. And then they have outside suppliers that are doing certain pieces of the, the truck and chipping them in. If one of those, for instance, if they couldn't get windshields or the windshields were just getting made slower, what are you going to do? You can't put a truck out there without a windshield. That supply is going to get slowed down. And when supply gets disrupted, like it is right now, prices rise. Why is that? I wish, uh, I, maybe Josh can put up a supply and demand curve uh, for the video watchers. But when you think about supply and demand, if, if there's a lot of supply, it, it, oversupply, prices are really low because they got to move product. If there's, a, if there's less supply and higher demand, so there's not enough trucks, but a lot of people want them, prices rise. And that's exactly what's happening right now. That's part of the inflation that we're experiencing, which is turning out not to be so transitory. And it's at about 5.5%. It's very high right now. It's not 1980s, late 70s high yet. Uh, but if we got one more significant disruption someplace... I think you are going to see some inflated prices that are, are fairly significant. And right now, when I went to buy my truck, there's no rebates. There's no deals. Uh, some, some dealerships are charging sticker or above. Well, this is a problem because we're not used to these things. 
Uh, a lot of our stuff, a lot of the microchips get produced in China and Malaysia and, and places like that. And they have COVID really bad there right now. Vietnam and Malaysia are essentially shut down right now. So what happened was, is when we decided that we were globalists some 35 years ago, what it means to be a globalist is probably prior to 1980, when Ford made a pickup truck, what they did is they made the pickup truck. They produced the, well, there weren't a lot of microchips then in pickup trucks, but they produced everything that was going into that truck, probably in two or three plants. And then they shipped them all together and put that truck together. When we became globalists, we decided, uh, and the opening up of China was really a, a big factor in this, we decided that we were going to produce goods and services in the cheapest place, not necessarily the United States. And that's why you can go to Costco and Walmart and Sam's Club and a myriad of other places and get things for, I mean, it's hardly anything. When you think about what it takes to make it and ship it and truck it and put it on the shelves and then scan your items out, and although you don't have to do that anymore, you can go to a self-checkout. But it costs a lot of money to make some of this stuff when you think of all this, and yet we're getting it for pennies. And that's because we're making it in places where the labor is, I don't know, maybe 25, 60 a dollar, cents an hour, maybe a dollar an hour. So we, we did this about 35 years ago or so. We decided that we were going to uh, abdicate a really very precious commodity that we had had and had made America kind of what it was, and that was our ability to produce. We abdicated our ability to produce goods and services. So when there's a problem way over in the South China Sea, it affects us right here at home. And now, uh, if there is a significant disruption to these complicated uh, supply chains, and COVID is the best example you could ever come up with. COVID has affected supply chains around the world. Every single country has COVID. Then the following things happen. Supply is going to get lower because we can't depend on supply from China right now or Vietnam or Malaysia. We make a lot of things in Malaysia, uh, in Sri Lanka. Prices rise. They inflate. That's what we have right now. We have inflation. And people that are in the, the people who make less money get affected the worst by this because their wages cannot out pace inflation right now. They're not even close. So families in the lower socioeconomic scales, they suffer the most. The solution is really produce in friendly countries or produce here. Now, even if we were producing everything here, I think supply chains would still be disrupted with COVID. Uh, there's a great book out right now. I think it's a great book because I really like this guy. I just bought it right before we started doing the podcast, and that is um, Uncontrolled Spread by Scott Gottlieb. He was the FDA commissioner under President Trump for a while. He's kind of apolitical. Uh, he does blame the Trump administration for some things, mainly being political, but the gist of the book is the government is not really uh, able to handle a pandemic right now, as we saw, and as we're continuing to see, because more people have died under Joe Biden's presidency than under President Trump, and the pandemic is still raging. So that's the supply chain. The supply chain is these uh, series of suppliers from around the world that are all making one thing or several things that are going to go into my F-150 that I just bought and overpaid a little bit for. But when that gets disrupted, that's why we're seeing inflation. One of the reasons why you see inflation in, in housing prices right now is because for a while you couldn't get lumber. Canada shut the border. We get a lot of our lumber from Canada. The states that were out west that we get a lot of lumber for from uh, for housing, they were closed down. The price of a two by four was like eight bucks. Normally it's like two bucks. And so to build a house last year, late last year, even early this year, you're going to add 30%, 40% to the building of that house. You didn't get any more rooms for it. You just got a bigger bill. So as COVID kind of wanes and, and we're seeing really a peak in uh, the Delta variant has happened, we believe, 
in the United States. Um, as we see that kind of wane, I think you'll start to see some of these markets open back up and the supply chains uh, get the kinks worked out of them, but it's going to take some time. We're going to be paying more for the same for quite some time, and then I think really what we should do, we're not going to do this, but we should do this. We're, we're not. There's no way we're going to do this. I think companies should start relooking at where they produce their goods and services from, the components that go into this. I think if I were, if I were Ford or GM or, or somebody like that, uh, I would start to bring what production I could back home. Uh, we, we are seeing that a lot in China. A lot of production, production is moving from China and going to other places, but it's going to places like Vietnam, Malaysia, Sri Lanka, even some Pakistan. Uh, we're making some things at a lot of, in India. We could run into the same problem, although those are friendlier places than China. Uh, we could still, if COVID raged there, we would have the same supply disruption. So the more stuff that we can bring home without increasing the price so much that you price yourself out of the market, I think would be better for us, better for America. Uh, I pray that People like Boeing and General Dynamics never move production overseas. They probably can't because they're systemically important to our defense industry. But I think that's what we have to be rethinking as a country right now. I, I don't think this is the last time we're going to see something like this. I hope it's a long time before we see it again. But I don't think it's the last time. And we have to prepare for these things. So now we know that there's a problem. We have to address the problem, and the smartest companies are going to do those things. They're going to look at their supply chain, they're going to say, how dependent do we want to be on that country being healthy or friendly or politically motivated to help us? And a lot of countries are not right now, and they haven't been for quite some time. So if you have questions, remember, you can always send them to joshua at epsf.com. You can listen on WCRF uh, 103.3. I'm on with Brian and Janelle and Ron on Thursday mornings. It's um, a great interface for you if you want to ask questions because there's always, like today we didn't, we, we had to let some questions go that we couldn't answer because we just ran out of time. But usually there's time to get a question in. And I want to hear your questions. You can follow us on Twitter at FI. Revelations at FI Revelations, and I want you to follow me there because I am going to start doing surveys and I do want you to answer them. I'm interested in what our people think, and that's a good way to, to do it. It's not scientific, but I, I we all we know that. I just want to know. I am David Safransky, and this is Financial Revelations.